G'day and welcome to the next episode of Tech Adapt Crafts. Today we are going to be painting some mushrooms. Uh, this little one here is the one that I did the demo on, but you can see I've got a collection of other mushrooms here that I'll show in more detail at the end of the video. They were a lot of fun to paint, but you can also see I have added in the rock spires and the daffodils into the little scene that we have here. You can see how very quickly doing a few projects can build up a much bigger setting. Also in here you can see some skeletons which I'll, uh, I'll show in greater detail later. They will be the focus of the next video. Okay, so the videos that I've been doing will unfortunately be a little less regular now that we are back at term with the requirements of uh, teaching online and all of the reports coming up soon, it will just make them a little bit harder for me to focus on the videos, but I will keep trying to put out as many as I can. All right, the, uh, the music that we're using in the video, uh, a shout out to bensound.com. Most of the music comes from him, but there is also one from Sensei over at freesound.org. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, hit like and leave a comment at the end of the video to give me some ideas as to what other terrain projects you think I should tackle. Hope you enjoy the video and uh, let's have a look at some of the scenery at the end. Cheers. Okay, here we go. The model has been sprayed black with a Citadel black spray. We're now going to paint the J Burroughs acrylic paint sand all over all of the stems. So all of the underneath part is going to go this sand color. In future, what I would do is an initial layer of a white or a light tan color, because this, this acrylic paint turned out to be fairly uh, fairly translucent. It needed several coats. That is, I think, after two or three coats of that um, of that paint. Next, we go to J. Burroughs Acrylic Paint Moss Green. This is a, a beautiful green color, and I do the edges all over the tops of the mushrooms. Again, on later models, um, I actually did that green over a far broader area. This music that you're listening to actually comes from Sunsei, and it's actually called Mushroom Background Music. Thought that was quite appropriate. Found it over on freesound.org. Next, I should have used the Liquitex Acrylic Color basics. I've got a bright aqua green that I used on the later models, but instead I made a mistake and made a mix of the moss green and sand. Now I do this on the on the underneath part of the mushroom as a blending color between the stem and the top. On later models, I also wrapped that color over onto the edge of the top side of the model. The rest of the music that you're hearing is from bensound.com. Now we come to the first blend color. This is Crafty Color Gloss Acrylic Paint Violet. You can get that at Bunnings. A lot of these paints were just straight from Bunnings. This, I did a blend of the moss green and the violet and added a, a layer color between the green and what would then be just the straight violet. Once this was done, I did put a, a straight color of violet around the tops of all of those mushroom tops. There's a number of different brushes here, but you might see me change brushes depending on the size of what I need to do or where I need to get into the model. I use a combination of uh, various different standard art brushes, uh, which you can get from any number of art supply stores, and a Citadel base paintbrush. Thank you. 
Right now there's a quick dry brush being done over there with the, the violet just with a little bit of that sand just to make it a little bit lighter. The next color I'm doing is a highlight of the edges of all the mushroom tops and it's using that bright aqua green with a mix of white into it. Just so it's a really bright, vibrant color there. And do all of the edges, the, the cracks of the, the top of the mushroom and all the way along the edge of each top. Next color, Citadel Leia, Emperor's Children. It's a beautiful pink color. I've gone with a lot of very vibrant colors in these mushrooms. I think it's a great way to just get a bit of flavor onto the battlefield or flavor onto the D&D board. So all of those fungal outcroppings or fungal pimples, whatever you want to call them, they all got that pink color to start with. And there are a lot of them. Incidentally, this model is actually from Printable Scenery. Matt Barker is a designer over in New Zealand, and uh, he has done some amazing models over the past few years. I have been backing each of his Kickstarters, and this is one of the ones from the Goblin Grotto. It's an amazing pack of, of scenery. Again, doing another quick dry brush using that violet and a little bit of white just to try and lighten up the tops of these models. Unfortunately, all of these colors did tend to be fairly translucent. On the bottom of the stems, I'm doing now a, a quick blend of the sand and gray. Now, this is using the gray that I mentioned in a previous video where I am taking the, the straightforward um, global fine art studio white and black and just making a fairly large container full of gray just so i have a standard gray that i use in all of my models this is being painted on all of the stonework around the bottom of the model After this, I go back through and paint that pink color on all of the fungal blooms around the base of the model, around the, the inside of the base of the model. This is doing a dry brush of the Emperor's Children and white. This is a step that I didn't do in the later models. I put the dry brush in only after I had done the wash over the whole model. You'll see the wash in just a minute. Very fiddly getting in there and painting all of those fungal blooms. Now in future I'll paint them before sticking them together. It made it really quite difficult to get into all of those nooks and crannies. It is a wonderful model but just a lot of hassle to get into there. Alright, here you can see the brown wash that I made. This is based on the, the mix described over from Black Magic Craft. Jeremy over there has a tutorial on how to make the brown and black wash. This just goes over the entire model. I will try to put a link, if I can, to that video. Yeah. 
here I started with the tops, but in the, the later figures, I found it was actually easier to start with the stems. Uh, and then when the piece is sitting on the table, it was then easier to paint all of the tops. It got really quite fiddly to hold the model doing it this way after having done the tops first. Guys, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. The piece is now finished, but I will say that there are a lot of things that I changed in the later videos. Uh, so if you can see on some of these, the colors came out much clearer by using more of the, the green at the start or more of the purple when it went on and just really making the piece a lot brighter. So I much preferred that technique and I think I did give a rundown of those changes that I made um, as I was doing the tutorial. One other, we've got some other ones that we're coming out here. This one is actually from Thingiverse. This is not from Printable Scenery. Uh, just doing out some different color schemes, uh, but doing the, the, uh, the pink pimples on the top just to tie them together. Also have here, I showed this in the rock, uh, Rocks by video. This was the failed print where it cut off um, early towards the start and I covered it in using the, uh, the, the leftover putty that I had uh, mixed up for those rock spires. You can see there that coming out as a, as a really nice little stump there and uh, doing a new color scheme. Uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see it from that, but new color scheme for those upward turning blooms. Uh, lastly, on these, this was yet again another failed print. Unfortunately, this does happen with 3D printing. Things don't always work, but uh, this one just ran out of filament at the top. And rather than throw it out, I have created a little uh, platform on the top just using some foam core uh, and a roller, uh, which was actually a, a 3D printed roller, a textured roller. I'll do a, um, a video on those, uh, I think, in the future. And it was just a wood grain texture. So painted brown and then with a, uh, a black wash over the top. The little rope bridge that you can see hanging down here is stringed from uh, Spotlight. Um, and then some skewers, barbecue skewers, and it's just tied off as it goes down, hardened with Mod Podge, and painted brown, washed, uh, washed brown as well. That is a that was a, a fantastic idea that my wife came up with about putting a some sort of watchtower on the top, and I really appreciated that. It was a, it was a great opportunity to do something new and not waste a print that had been um, that had been done. All right, hope that you enjoyed the video. And uh, as I said at the beginning, these will be a little less frequent due to school going back, but I'll, I'll keep doing as much as I can. Hope you're enjoying it, and we'll see you next time. Cheers.